Madam Chairwoman, um, Ranking Member Cochran, it's a privilege to be uh, with you here today as we mark up the uh, new Farm Bill, the Agriculture Reform, Food and Jobs Act of 2013. For the last two years, as you have pointed out, we have worked very hard to sign a reform-oriented Farm Bill into law. Unfortunately, we were unable to do this in 2012. Now we're back again around this table once again. That's nothing unusual for a Farm Bill. Last year, I was proud to say that we put together a bipartisan bill that strengthened and preserved the safety net, i.e., in all the hearings that we've had, the number one issue with farmers, ranchers, lenders was crop insurance. I think this uh, certainly benefits uh, all of our producers and rural America, uh, too. And we also uh, provided close to $24 billion in deficit reduction. We even passed a bill through the Senate with regular order. Imagine that. It is beyond, uh, uh, pardon me, let me be clear, I still want to pass Farm Bill and provide long-term certainty to farmers and ranchers and their families in Kansas and all across the country. However it stands today, I do not believe this is a reform bill. I believe it is a rear view mirror bill. Target prices under any name, whether they are counter-cyclical payments, adverse market payments, or government subsidies, which are proven to be trade and market distorting, it is beyond frustrating that a year ago we passed a bill with no countercyclical program, real reform, and today we are asked to support the new adverse market payment program that just amps up the subsidies and continues target prices for all commodities, even though there are areas of the country where we do not want them. Uh, we are literally trading and saving th the direct payments that we knew we had to give up. This mark not only sets target prices, it raises the guaranteed price level for rice by $2.80 to 13 30 and peanuts jump from their 495 target price under rate to 523. These prices are set so high they may cover a producer's full cost of production, essentially guaranteeing that a farmer profits if yields are average or above average. In this budget environment, time when we are looking to make smart cuts to farm programs, I simply don't know how to justify a program that pays producers more than the cost of production and essentially becomes nothing more than another income transfer program, not a risk management tool. I'm going to try to speed this up. To be specific, it is guaranteeing a producer in the Delta $2.40 per hundred weight profit at an average yield of 7,900 rate per acre. This amendment would guarantee uh, that uh, Delta farmer a profit of about 190 bucks uh, per acre. Of course, the real problem with farmers planning for a government program and not for the market is that these programs then only serve to extend the period of low prices. We all know this is not good policy and is bound to have unintended consequences like impacting uh, planning decisions. When base acres were established over 25 years ago, Kansas planted 2.8 million acres of corn, 4.2 million acres of sorghum, 1.6 million acres of soybeans, and 12.1 million acres of wheat. We were mono agriculture. In the most recent three-year period, Kansas farmers planted 4.6 million acres of corn, 2.6 million acres of sorghum, 4 million acres of soybeans and 8.8 .8 million of wheat. That's about 5 million fewer acres of wheat and sorghum and 4.2 more acres of corn and soybeans. Uh, these figures are mirrored in many other cropping regions, especially in the Midwest. Madam Chairwoman, these acreage shifts occurred because farmers made those decisions, not Washington. Our producers have planted for the domestic and international markets. I also have long-standing WTO concerns. The United States lost the cotton uh, WTO case to Brazil and part of the decoupled target price program. It is not right to force that same risk onto other commodities when we already know the potential pitfalls. The WTO stove is hot. We should not reach out to touch it again. Madam Chairwoman, I hope that we can improve upon this bill today to more resemble the risk-oriented and market-based approach uh, this committee has previously taken as of last year. Thank you.